Stop using flat and fake mockups that make your design look unrealistic. In this tutorial, I'll show you the exact Photoshop method professionals use to create clean, realistic, and client ready mockups step by step. I'm already in Photoshop and I have this blank mockup file open. If you want to use the same file, you can find the download link in the description of this video. Let's get started. Step 1 Separating each page. As you can see, this mockup has 4 different pages. Before we begin editing, we need to separate each page into its own layer. This makes it easier to control lighting, shadow, and design placement later. To do that, we first need to make a selection of each page. You can use any selection tool like the lasso or quick selection tool, but notice that it doesn't always make the perfect selection. The edges can be rough or uneven. So instead, I'll use the object selection tool which gives a more accurate result. Once you select the object selection tool, go to the top option bar and change the mode to lasso. Now simply draw around the first page you want to select. Photoshop will automatically detect the object inside your selection and create a clean outline around it. Now that the first page is selected, press Ctrl and J on your keyboard to duplicate it onto a new layer. This creates a copy of only the selected area. Rename this layer to page 1 so you can keep track of it easily. Next, go to the background layer and repeat the same process. Draw a selection around another page. Then press Ctrl and J again to duplicate it. Rename this one to page 4. Continue doing the same for page 2 and page 3 until all 4 pages are separated into their own layers. Now we have all pages isolated, which will make the next steps much easier to control. Step 2 Adding Light and Shadow for Realism to make the mockup look realistic, we'll add light and shadow to each page. Start by selecting page 3, go to the adjustment panel and choose exposure adjustment layer. Now click on the small clipping mask icon at the bottom of the panel. This makes sure the adjustment affects only the page and not the whole image. Reduce the exposure slightly, not too much, just enough to make it look natural. Now we'll copy this exposure layer for each of the other pages. Press Ctrl and Z 3 times to duplicate the exposure layer 3 more times. Drag each copy above every page layers. Right click on each exposure copy and create clipping mask. Now each page has its own lighting control. Next, we'll use gradient to create direction of the light and shadow. Select the layer marks of the first exposure layer. From the toolbar, select the gradient tool. In the top menu, click on the gradient editor and choose the black to white gradient under the basic section. Now click and drag a gradient line from left to right across the first page. This makes it look like the light is hitting one side of the page. Do the same for page 4 left to right again. For the page 2 and page 3, drag the gradient in the opposite direction, right to left, to balance the light. Once done, you'll notice each page now has its own light and shadow, making the layout look more realistic and natural. Step 3 Creating the Smart Object Area Now let's turn one of the pages into a smart object where we'll place our design. We'll start with the page 3 as an example. Select the page 3 layer in the Layers panel. Then go to the toolbar and choose the Rectangle Shape tool. Now draw a vertical rectangle over the area of page 3 matching its shape and position as closely as possible. In the layers panel, right click on the rectangle 1 and choose convert to smart object. This converts the shape into a smart object so that we can easily replace design later. Now right click again on the canvas and choose distort. You'll see corner handles appear. Adjust all four corners to match exactly with the edges of the page underneath. Take your time here, accuracy makes a big difference in the final result. Once it matches, right click again and choose warp. This allows you to bend the shape slightly so it follows the natural curve of the page. And that's it, your smart object base for page 3 is ready. Step 4 Placing the design Now we'll place our actual design inside that smart object. To do that, double click the smart object thumbnail of the rectangle layer. This is where you will insert your design. Now go to file, place embedded and choose the design file for the page 3. Resize it to fit the canvas perfectly. Make sure it covers all the edges so no gaps remain. 
When it looks right, click the close button on the top tab and Photoshop will ask if you want to save the changes. Click yes. And here is the magic. The design automatically appears on the page 3 perfectly placed with the correct perspective and lighting. Now repeat the same process for page 2, page 4 and page 1. It's exactly the same method so I'll speed up this part in the video. After that all your pages will have their own realistic design. They no longer look flat or fake because each page has its own shadow, lighting and smart layer. If you ever want to change the design, simply double click on the smart object icon and replace it with your new image. It updates automatically. Step 5 Finishing Toss Now let's finish the background to match the style. Select the background layer. Use the object selection tool to make a selection of the background area. If the selection isn't perfect, use the quick selection tool to fix the selection. Once the background is selected, create a solid color adjustment layer. Pick a green color from the mockup. I'll choose a soft light green and then click OK. Now in the layers panel, change the blending mode from normal to multiply. This allows the texture and shadows from the original background to show through the color making it blend naturally instead of looking flat. You can easily change the color anytime by double clicking the color icon and selecting a new shade. And that's it, your professional Photoshop mockup is complete. Each page has realistic depth, light and shadow. I hope you learned something new today. You can find the VST files in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.